Quasars are very bright objects at very big distances, sort of at the edge of the universe. And sometimes it occurs that between this quasar and us, there is a galaxy, a very massive object. And due to the deflection of light, which was predicted by Einstein, this galaxy in between can act as a lens and produce two or three or four images of the background quasar, although it's only one object. And uh, since the galaxy consists of stars, each of these stars can act as an individual lens, as a micro lens. Now we cannot see the individual micro images produced by each star, but each star can magnify the quasar. And because the lens, the galaxy moves across the line of sight, this magnification changes with time. And therefore, we can see this background quasar getting brighter and fainter due to this microlensing effect. And uh, each individual star acts like a, a looking glass. It magnifies, it zooms in into this uh, quasar. And uh, th since this quasar is a very compact object, only slightly larger than our, sol our solar system, the microlensing effect can probe the structure of this accretion disk. We know by now that the quasar consists of a supermassive black hole 10 million or 100 million times as massive as our sun and there's matter circling around this black hole in a form of a disk, we call it accretion disk and this disk gets hotter and hotter and the matter speeds around with higher and higher speed and with this microlensing effect we can sort of uh, resolve the innermost part and see that it's very hot, very blue in the inner part and more cooler at the outside. So we can really, like with a microscope, disentangle the structure of the innermost region of this quasar of this accretion disk. For many decades we've known that stars in the Milky Way move very fast. In fact, they move too fast compared to the matter we know. So already in the 70s it was proposed that our Milky Way has an extended structure which we call halo, which consists of an unknown kind of matter. We call it dark matter. And many candidate particles were proposed that could make up this dark matter. Some are elementary particles and some are astrophysical objects. In the 90s, 80s, 90s, uh, some scientists proposed that this halo could be made up of stellar type objects, maybe dark objects that don't shine, but that have masses between the mass of the sun and planets or so. And they were called MACHOS. This is an acronym, a short name for Massive Astrophysical Compact Halo Objects. And in 1986, a Polish-American scientist, Bonan Paczynski, proposed if the halo of our Milky Way is indeed made up of such machos, we can test it. We just have to look at stars in our neighbor galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud, and watch the stars. And if there are machos in our Milky Way halo, every now and then a macho will pass in front of a background star and due to the, the microlensing effect, it will brighten this background star for a certain amount of time, a few days or a few weeks. And then three teams tried to monitor these background stars with a very large campaign to search for these events. They should be rare, about one in a million, but still detectable. And for many years they tried it, they found very few of these events, if any, and so the conclusion was that the halo of the Milky Way cannot be made of these machos because otherwise we should have found hundreds or more of these microlensing events and the detected number was much smaller. So the conclusion was no, the extended part of our Milky Way, the halo, cannot be made up of these machos.